Hi, I'm Mr. Richmond, and this is your Unit 5.1 Lesson Summary. Unit 5.1 will be about simple and compound interest. Um, we are going to continue looking at some of the patterns that we did in Chapter 4, which was uh, arithmetic and geometric sequences, um, and how they can be used in the real world. One of our first examples is a financial example uh, regarding money and investment banking. So I'm going to start with a problem with the word situation and use that to kind of get into topics for the day. It says, uh, suppose, suppose your family deposited $10,000 into an interest-bearing account. Um, let's say it's for college or a college fund for you. That earns 4% simple interest each year. Now another friend you have, their family deposited the same amount of money, $10,000, at the same interest rate, 4%, but it's compound interest each year. And we're going to take a look at what happens to the money in these accounts try to come up with a formula so that we could look into the future and see how much money we uh, inside these accounts um, and how that kind of can relate to arithmetic and geometric sequences. So first thing you know is what simple interest is. Simple interest uh, is when you take a, a, a principal amount you have, let's say $10,000 and you times it by 4%, 10,000 times 0 0.04 and you get an interest for that year. So I made a table here to start. So this is time. So time at zero and the simple interest balance is 10,000 and the compound interest balance is 10,000. That's what we're starting with, our starting point. After one year, to find out how much money is in that account, I take my 10,000, I times it by 0 0.04, okay? 10,000 times 0.04 is 400. So that simple interest account is gonna earn you $400 that year. Um, then I can add that in and get 10,400. The way a simple interest account works though is they don't take that interest and put it back into your uh, account balance. You have that, it is technically there, but it's not earning any more interest. So you would have this 10,400, which by the way, I can speed that up. Whenever you wanna multiply by a decimal or by a percent, but then also add that percent back into the original amount, instead of times it by just the decimal, 0 0.04, times it by 1.04, it'll add everything in for you in one go. Then what they do is that same amount of interest that you earn, that 4% of 10,000, gets added into the new balance, 10,800, and added into the new balance, 11,200. So once you've calculated one year's of interest in a simple interest situation, you know what it's gonna be every year. Every year you get that same amount until the principal changes or you take the money out. So a little different. Compound interest uh, is gonna work the same way initially. It's gonna be 10,000 times that 0 0.04 added in, so times 1.04. And you get this amount of 10,400, so we're in the same position. But in compound interest, what's nice is they take that interest you earned, add it back to the account, and now calculate the interest off that new balance, which means every year you're getting interest on a little bit more money. So now I use 10,400 times by 1.04, get an amount. Take that amount times by 1.04, get an amount. Take that amount times by 1.04. So we can already see that the compound interest formula is a little more favorable. It's earning a little bit more money than the simple interest uh, formula is. What we want to do is see exactly how and maybe try to even come up with a, a nice formula for um, how this works. So let's start by examining the balances. If I look at the simple interest balances, they're starting at 10,000 and it's going up by 400, up by 400, up by 400. Now, if we think back to the last chapter, we learned about the sequences. If I had a sequence that was always adding 400, it would be an arithmetic sequence. And that's what simple interest is. It's an arithmetic sequence. Okay, we also graphed arithmetic sequences last chapter. And we learned that they're linear, linear functions. That will make it much easier for me to try to write the formula for this now because I have an idea of what it should look like. It should look like a linear equation. Now I could do the arithmetic sequence formula for this, but it's not favorable because all arithmetic sequences have to start at one and my table starts at zero. When I have a function or a table that starts at zero, it's probably better to try to write it in a you know, standard linear function form. So I'm gonna go to my y equals mx plus b type form to try to write this simple interest. So in mx plus b, b is always my y-intercept. Y-intercept is the value at zero, which I have, so I know that formula-wise, I have plus 10,000 as my y-intercept. Now I just need to look at the slope. The slope is what it's changing by every time. Or in other words, in arithmetic sequence, that d value, the common difference. The common difference is 400, so I know my slope should be 400. So in a linear function type form, it'd be y equals 400x plus 10,000, and I can check it. 
zero, plug it in, 10,000, one, plug it in, 10,400, et cetera. So I feel confident in that. Now I'm gonna to wanna to write it though as a function using balance in terms of time. So since it's in balance, a balance in terms of time, I'm gonna do B of T equals, and that is equivalent to Y. It's just a function notation for Y. And then my formula, 400X plus 10,000, but again, the input is not X, the input is time, so I'll use T. So 400T plus 10,000. And like that, I have a nice workable equation that'll calculate my simple interest. Now that I know that, I can skip my table from three to 10. I don't have to keep adding 400, just like we learned with sequences. Once we have a formula, we can skip ahead. I'm gonna plug in a 10. 10 times 400 is 4,000. 4,000 plus 10,000. Actually, I'll write that work out. 400 times 10 plus 10,000. 400 times 10 is 4,000 plus 10 is 14,000. So now I know how much money would be in that account at 10 years for this simple interest balance. Now, looking at compound interest, because it's definitely working, working differently. So let's again look at the balances. Okay, went up by 400, then went up by 416, then went up by, uh, who knows, right? We gotta subtract that out. But I see a commonality here. Every single time, they're taking the previous answer times by 1.0. Taking the previous answer times by 1.0. We're constantly multiplying by the same number. If we think back again to chapter four, when you're constantly multiplying by the same number, you have a geometric sequence. Now, I can use that to help me write the formula, but again, it's not starting at one like my sequences did, it's starting at zero. But I can use some of that knowledge I remember from sequences. Geometrics were exponential, which means this equation should have our general exponential form, which we learned back in chapter one, a times b to the x. I know it's gonna have a variable up in the exponent. So uh, in those type of equations, they work very similar to slope intercept. Your starting point, your g1, right? Your g1 goes first. The factor that you're multiplying by is what's gonna be the base of your exponent, and then you raise it to a power. So under those kind of general rules of an exponential equation, my starting point was 10,000, or my g1, right? The factor I'm multiplying by this time is 1.04. And instead of x, I'm raising it to the t. Now I wanna make sure that that actually works. So anything with the zero power is one. So if I plug in a zero, I get one. One times 10,000 is 10,000. Plug in a one, 1.04 to the one times 10,000 is 10,400. 1.04 squared times 10,000 is actually 10,816, because it's equivalent to doing 10,000 times 1.04 twice. So this is the correct equation, okay? Um, actually, as of right now, that's probably x, but I wanna write it in a function notation with t. So similarly to what I did here, I'm gonna change the y to balance in terms of time, d of t, and then plug in my formula, 10,000 times 1.04 and instead of the x, it's in terms of time to the t power. And now I have a nice equation for compound interest. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna to try to find the answer when t time is 10. So now that I have a function for it, all I have to do is plug in a 10 for time. So it would be 10,000 times 1.04 to the 10 power. And you can actually do that right on your graphing calculator. 10,000 parentheses 1.04, as long as you use the hat button, to the 10th power. And it'll work that out right there for you. You gotta make sure you use the parentheses. And then of course I need to round. So my answer would be $14,802.44 in 10 years. So, what we know now is a general form for um, simple interest and compound interest. One is arithmetic, so it's linear. One is geometric, so it's exponential. And now that I know that, I can make a simple interest formula for it. Before I write that formula, let's do one last example of these, because if we did start a college fund, you would likely get it 18 years later. They started right when you are born. So let's see the big difference between these accounts. So I'm now gonna find the balance of the simple interest for B of T 
at 18 years. So B of 18, and I'm going to plug it right into that equation. 400 times 18 plus 10,000. So your simple interest account would have 400 times 18 plus 10,000 is $17,000. $200, which nowadays is maybe, maybe enough to go to a cheaper college for one year when you think of all the different uh, costs you have. So not really enough. Hopefully the compound will be a little bit better. Balance of 18, our balance when T is 18 equals 10,000, parentheses 1.04 to the 18th power. Again, I'm gonna type it in, 10,000 parentheses, 1.04 to the 18th power, same way I did before. And I have a compound balance of $20,258.17 at 18 years. So the friend here in this situation is gonna have a little bit more money at 18 years, um, a little over 3,000 more. Um, and they deposit the same amount of money for the same amount of time at the same interest rate. So it just shows you the effect of compounding. And because compounding is an exponential function, you really don't see the true benefits of a compound um, interest situation until later years. So if this account got out into the 30, 40, 50 years, it really starts to make some major leaps and bounds and, and make you a lot of money. So it's always preferred, if you can, to have a compound interest uh, bank, bank account. So formula-wise, what does that mean? Well, our simple interest would be B of T equals 400X is what we had here, or 400T, which was basically um, our interest rate times our principal. So let's go principal times rate, and then the X or the T was time. So principal times rate times time plus our original principal. So that would be a basic simple interest formula for this. Um, B of T represents balance, our P is our principal, which is our R is our interest rate, and that has to be converted to a decimal. Okay, you never plug an interest rate in as a full percent, I wouldn't plug it in as 5%, I'd plug it in as a .05. And T is your time in years. And this will be the same for the compound interest form I'm about to write. Compound, compound interest form based on what we had was B of T equals, um, again, our original deposit, so our principal, P, times parentheses. Our rate was 0 0.04, but it got added to a 1. So I'm going to say 1 plus our rate raised to the T power. And again, B of T is the balance, P is the principal, R is the interest rate, and T is the time. So again, just to summarize what we have, we have simple interest, which is just adding one year's interest every single year. It never changes. It makes it arithmetic and a linear function when you write it. And we have compound interest, which takes the interest you earned, adds it back into the account, and then recalculates the interest every single year. So it's timesing by the same number every time, making it geometric and an exponential function when we actually write it. Thank you.